Welcome back to The Bright Side, Macy here, The Bright Side Girl, and today we're going to be doing my October audiobook wrap-up. Just in case you missed it, I posted my October reading wrap-up yesterday, which will be all of the books that I physically read with my eyeballs for the month of October, but for now we're only going to be talking about the books that I listened to via audiobook. There are quite a few here, and they are all spooky, fall, Halloween themed. So if that's your deal, grab a cup of coffee because we're going to be having a little chat because I had a pretty good reading month and I'm very excited to talk about these things. Okay, so first up we're going to be talking about the things that I listened to for the Not So Scary Readathon, which was the readathon that I created for October that was featuring like Halloween spooky fall books that weren't like scary scary, they were just like lightly spooky and atmospheric, and I had a really great time so I'll definitely be doing that again next year. So the first book that I listened to was The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd-Jones. This one is narrated by Mo Moira Quirk, I think is how you pronounce it. Hopefully I can put it down below, but for some reason on the audiobook she is not listed as the narrator. I actually had to like listen to the audiobook to hear her name. It says narrator coming soon. I don't know. But I picked this one up originally because I had found it in a bookstore last year. This is the special like Owl Crate edition, um, normally has like a black cover. And I literally had no interest in reading this book whatsoever until I found the special edition. And I was like, I'm probably not going to like it so I just should just get this over with. I have no idea why I thought that. This was incredible. It was a little bit spookier than what I wanted for the readathon. It's not scary, but it was definitely like creepy. This is about a family of grave diggers, I think is what they're called. They're basically hired to keep corpses in the grave. Like for some reason, in this one part of the woods, the corpses will come back to life and they're called bone houses. And her and her family are like basically assigned to kill them and put them back. It's kind of like a weird job because people are starting to not believe it anymore and um, they're not seeing it happen and so they're starting to like not put their faith in this and kind of it's becoming more of a fairy tale. And so she's learning more and more how not true that is and how there, there really is a need for their job and there's this whole magical thing that is happening and a reason for it. And she like meets a boy and they go on a journey together and it's set heavily in the woods. It's got a great old fashioned vibe to it. The family is adorable because it's mostly her and her brother and her sister and they've got a lot of hardships they've got to overcome and a lot of mystery and it's so incredible the ending was absolutely phenomenal. I gave this a solid five stars and I listened to it in one day. Great way to start the readathon. Then I listened to a middle grade book called The Night Gardener which has been on my radar for like about a year or so and this one is written by Jonathan Xier and narrated by Beverly A. Crick and this was uh, a good choice for a readathon because middle grades are always uh, a little bit more fast paced and a little bit shorter. So this is about basically two kids that are kind of on their own. They're basically kind of like orphans, but their family they believe is alive somewhere. And their family was like off on a journey and they're kind of waiting for their parents to come back. So they decide to go and live with this family and this governess at their house and they will help them take care of the garden and clean and all that kind of stuff. But there's like mysterious creepy things happening at this house and they're starting to kind of feel unsafe and have something to do with this night gardener. So I don't want to give away too much more but it was super fantastic. I love books set in like creepy houses that have like a mystery around them and I thought it was really enjoyable. So glad I finally got to it and I wound up giving this one four stars. Then I picked up another middle grade called Shadow Weaver by Marcy Kate Connolly. This is narrated by Rachel L. Jacobs. So this one, I just thought the cover was phenomenal. I read Monstrous by Marcy K. Connolly last year, which was a Frankenstein retelling, and this is about a young girl who can control shadows, and she has a shadow friend and magical abilities, and something happens with her and her shadow friend in her family that forces them to leave and like run away from home. Uh, her parents kind of basically want to stop her from having these abilities because they're scared of them, and so she runs away with her shadow friend and kind of takes up residence with a new family and tries to kind of hide what's happening. And then she discovers that maybe she's not the only one with magical abilities out there and a bunch of mysterious things happen with her and her friend and these rituals. And it's just very magical, very woodsy, 
very 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 good it's very like spooky for a middle grade I thought it was really really enjoyable this is book one of a duology so I hope to pick up the other one sometime soon but I wound up giving this one four stars as well and the last book that I picked up for the readathon was Slade House by David Mitchell this one's narrated by Thomas Judd and Tanya Rodriguez so I thought this was a middle grade I think purely based on its size and the fact that it starts out talking about like a 13 year old boy but basically it's about this creepy house called the Slade House and every like seven or nine years people get eaten up by the house and disappear and there's all this mystery things revolving around it and you can't actually find the Slade House any other time of year it just kind of like magically appears there's a lot of like quantum physics-esque stuff in here and there's a uh, some creepy demons and this was not middle grade this was not a good choice for not so scary thought because it was kind of scary uh it was really short and it followed like uh, i think like four or five different sets of people like over the years getting like sucked into this house and like their journey and what was happening and then you get the myths behind everything i actually found it really enjoyable and really well done it's really quick it's good for the fall and i gave this one probably about 3.5 maybe four stars then the next book i listened to after the readathon was the archived by victoria schwab this one is narrated by piper good eve and i finally got to another victoria schwab book i've only listened or read this savage song and i am so glad i picked up something else because i just wasn't sure how i was feeling about her so this is about an otherworldly library where the dead are basically like categorized and put into these uh, cells for their stories to remain and sometimes they can kind of like come back to life and there are these keepers that kind of keep everything in order and it's this big hidden mysterious thing so our main character Mackenzie is a keeper and she works in this library and then just a bunch of mysterious things happen as she kind of learns more about the world and trains to be like higher up in this hierarchy and why the system though is the way it is it's super good it's perfect for Halloween time because it's about ghosts and it's just very creepy and oh, it's so good. It has a lot of good mysteries to it. I really enjoyed the romance in here and the friendships and just the backstory of Mackenzie's life. I thought the writing was really good. I actually thought the writing was better for this than this Savage Song, even though this is more of a debut. Um, I haven't read the second book yet, but I really, really want to. I'm very excited about it, and I gave this one four stars. Then I picked up, finally, The Vampire Academy by Rochelle Mead. This one's narrated by Stephanie Wolfe. I originally didn't love her narration, so I kind of had stopped reading this one in the past, but I decided just to get this one over with because I wanted to watch the movie, which I still haven't done. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to watch it for fall. So this one follows our main character, Rose, and she is assigned a to be a protector for her friend, Lissa, who is basically a vampire princess and she's kind of assigned to keep her like in check and to make sure everything's okay. They kind of run off together for certain reasons and get caught and drugged back into vampire society and kind of uh, reprimanded for things that they've done and so then it's kind of them like learning to be in this world and learn more about it and kind of change the situations and I just kind of wanted to get this one checked off I had extremely mixed feelings about this book on one hand I really liked the vampire system I liked the like the hierarchy of the vampires and the royalty and the different types of vampires and the just the different systems and the different rules I really thought that was like all really enjoyable and the training and all of that stuff a little bit more unique and really fun but I hated all the high school drama I like high school drama like to a certain extent but I just felt like it was more of a contemporary book in certain ways it had a lot of trigger warnings for a lot of things which <laughs> I was kind of surprised about like self-harm and suicide and animal abuse and like all kinds of crazy stuff I was just really really surprised that there was a lot of that content in here a lot of like high school uh, mental health stuff and I thought it was like a little bit too much and too heavy for a fantasy book personally and I thought some things were like way over the top with appropriateness <laughs> so I wasn't loving this one as much as I wanted to I did enjoy it enough to continue on with the series but I just thought that there were so many unlikable characters and unlikable things that were happening I'm not really digging the romance that much for various reasons as well uh, but I'm curious to see where it goes like I said I do like the differences of the vampires and the ages and like all kinds of stuff like that I just like sometimes the high schoolness of this book just got to me in the drama. It just thought it was kind of over the top. So I wound up giving this one three stars. 
Then I listened to Jacoby by William Ritter. This is narrated by Nicola Barber, who I love and narrates the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. She's super fantastic. This has all of those uh, gothic mystery vibes about it. It's Victorian, which I love for this time of year. I thought originally this was a version of a Jack the Ripper retelling, I think probably because it's called Jacoby, and because it's Victorian London, but it's really just more of a murder mystery with a fantastical, like, paranormal element to it, um, and I wound up really, really liking it, but this is not anything really to do with Jack the Ripper, so just kind of keep that in mind. So this is about our main character, Jacoby, and he, I can't remember what they call him, but he basically has the ability to see like paranormal supernatural things. So he meets our lead character Abigail and he starts talking to her about how she had like at one point had like an elf on her shoulder and she had droppings of fairies on her uh, blouse and things that she couldn't see. And he is basically assigned to solve mysteries and things that revolve around like supernatural, paranormal, and fantastical things. Kind of gave me like uh, fantastical beast vibes, honestly, but has more of a Sherlock vibe than anything else because he's very, like, um, specific in the way that he's thinking and the way he does things. I super enjoyed that because it wasn't what I was expecting and I loved the talk of, like, the creatures and the fairies and it was kind of like Spiderwick and Fantastical Beast with a little romance thrown in there. I thought the mysteries were really good and it was just a super, super fun read and I can't wait to read the rest of them and I wound up giving this one four stars. And lastly, I read The Dreadful Tale of Prosper Redding by Alexandra Bracken. This one is narrated by Kirby Hayborn. So this is another middle grade book I have been meaning to get to for so long. This is about our lead character, Prosper. Prosper's great, 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 great grandfather signed some kind of contract with a demon and he has basically cursed his family to fulfill this contract and so Prosper finds out that he has a demon living inside of him that he can like talk to and is annoying and is trying to get him to sign a new contract and torture his family. So he is basically learning to deal with this and learning new members of his family and trying to like survive and also get rid of this demon but the demon is like this creepy little fox and he is hysterical. Our narrator is absolutely fantastic. He did such a good job with the fox and the different differentiating our characters. There's witchy vibes in here and it's just a really really great Halloween read and perfect middle grade as well but just overall super fun. Can't wait to read book two and I wound up giving this one four stars. So that is everything I listened to for the month of October. I had a fantastic reading month and I hope to repeat that for the rest of the year but I always do great when we have like themed uh, months like <laughs> Halloween and Christmas and all that kind of stuff. So I really enjoyed this month. Let me know what you guys listen to down below in the comments and if you love audiobooks or not. Have you listened to anything good lately? Because I always have a list going and I will see you guys next time on the bright side. Bye!